Hey guys, it is Sonia and Matt from Junk Monkey Paint Company, and you guys know what time it is, right? It's day 17. Can you believe it? We've been on this island for 17 days straight painting furniture, and I've been digging out all kinds of stuff to teach you guys some great uh, furniture painting techniques and tutorials, all free right here on my page for 30 days straight. So that means if you want to learn how to paint a piece of furniture in your, in your house, or, you know what, maybe this is the summer or the year that you decide to have a junk and thrift and Holland painting kind of business, this is the place to be because you can learn all kinds of fun techniques. For me as a furniture painter for over 13 years, and now, of course, me and Matt together, we have our own line of paint called Junk Monkey Paint, called Junk Monkey Paint here at Junk Monkey Paint Company. All the things that I did for all my clients, I teach you guys now for free. I'm sharing the goods with you guys, so you can come here to the watering hole here at Junk Monkey Paint Company and learn all the things. And hopefully you take the things that I teach you here and you go and you build a beautiful business. For any of you out there that definitely have dreams of building your own business, you also know that I am a business coach. I teach people virtually all over the world and I do have a group. So if you would like to be mentored by me, be sure to go to junkmonkeypaint.com and click Coach and Create Club, okay? So one of the questions I've been getting from you guys a lot, and I know, hashtag putting in a bunch, and you've seen me paint furniture before, that I also paint furniture with fabric. That's a big question that we get. Sonia, can we use your paint to paint fabric? Yes, indeed, you can. All right, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that today. And I'm going to use this little stand. We actually bought this um, probably about two years ago at a summer junkin. Um, yard sale. It's actually one of Matt's friends, so I knew the, ho the home that it came from. And uh, it's had things sitting on it, so that's why it's kind of like bunched down right now. But it just needs fluff. It just needs fluff. That's all good to go. Duffy step. Yes, absolutely. It was a step stool to get to our bed, right? It's a little doggy stool we used it for. So anyway, who has uh, doggies with short legs, right? So I'm going to go ahead and give some life to this piece. Right now it's got this really thick fabric onto it, and it looks like somebody did a homemade, homemade upholstery job on it already. I can see the glue, I can see the band they put on it, and I think it's pretty cool, right? We're, but we're going to take it one step further and give it some new life. Now, the legs are completely wood, so yes, when I'm painting fabric, I always grab for our paint line. We have two, of course, the milk paint and the chalky style paint, but the chalky style paint with pickles on it sticks to pretty much anything under the sun. So whether it's fabric, whether it's glass, whether it's real wood or fake wood, it doesn't make a difference difference, right? Metal, corkboard, you name it, you see I paint it all, right? I just look at stuff and go, is this going to be a good fit or not, right? And so this was a good fit and I took it home. Now here's a quick tip before I get started, all right? I will tell you that sometimes you paint fabric on like chairs and maybe you're leaving the wood as is. So in a case, if you are somebody who's planning to paint fabric but not planning to paint the legs, I am, so I'm a little bit different today, just know that here's a tip. You can take painter's tape and you can tape that entire leg off or that arm or something that you don't want to get paint on it. Or you can use something like saran wrap or foil wrap to cover the parts that you're not looking to get paint on, it, right? So for me, I am looking to paint the legs as well. But when I'm looking to paint furniture that has a wooden part and a fabric part and I'm going to do them in two different colors, I'll start with my fabric first because if I get any paint where gravity happens, and if I get any paint overflow that runs off this, as I show you guys my process, the thing is, once it dries, I can still paint the legs. Because our chalky paint is so good, it will stick to the last layer of paint, right? Which makes it so easy when you want to just flip out colors of your furniture and things like that. So today, I'm going to go ahead. You've seen me paint fabric with grays. It's probably one of my go-tos, especially smoky coal, Paris gray. I love it. I have a chair over here, which maybe by the end of this video, I'll pull it out for you guys. But it's done in mermaid tail. That was the last remembers the rocking chair we did that was a neighbor that actually gave me a rocking chair that he was going to burn get rid of and I'm like heck yeah give it to me it was kind of a similar color like this except it had some pattern onto it and it turned out beautiful and I even stenciled it we may put a little stencil on this we'll see how crazy with the cheese was it, was it was that color but originally it was black it was sun bleached out yeah right just in the sun in the summer so I have got a color called Liberty Blue. What do you think of the Liberty Blue, right? Beautiful, vibrant blue. Classic color. Who knows what color I'll do the legs of, the, of this uh, ottoman once I get to it. But we're going to start up here, okay? Before I get started, Matt, do you want to give some holler help, some shout outs, and tell me who's with us? And uh, <clears throat> see, everybody's rocking and rolling and ready to go. And Sharon, of course. Yes. Yes. Jennifer on YouTube says, y'all make sure you better like this video. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Nick just left Walmart. He said with some awesome French style paper, which inspired Ooh. me for a project. Very nice, yeah. Gayla Bratton's on. Uh, Gwendolyn's on. All of our favorites. Shailen Frederick's on. Linda Linda says 62 here on nice. the California coast. You guys all survived the, uh, the snow apocalypse. It didn't yeah. happen. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I do have to say, it probably has to be a hard job trying to figure out Mother Nature and all her moves. <laughs> Trying to figure out. Yeah, they're you know, definitely getting it now. It might be tough, right? But yeah, we survived. We're all good. Everything's intact. So, uh, Dana works at Post My First Project today, loving the paint. Yay! I have lots of colors. Make sure you go and your brushes now. projects on Facebook. It's free and it's getting close to 5,000 of us painters in there right now, <clears throat> painting and sharing what we're doing every single day. Lots of it. Thanks to Lynette Bonham for adding me. Yay! Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need to be here and in that sharing. Okay, project. would this yep. paint. <sighs> Would this paint be yeah. good to paint over some of glass painted fireplace? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So. Uh, it sticks to pretty much anything under the sun. Liberty like Anna that. Pranky said, "Liberty blue, ooh la la." Ooh la la. I likes it. All right. So <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right. So here's my piece of fabric. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and prep this for fabric painting. Mm -hmm. How do I do it? I'm going to go ahead and use one of my handy dandy spray bottles, not to make my fabric totally wet, but just to dampen it down, okay? Okay, so this is what I think. This might be a good way for you guys to think about it. What happens, because I want to get, I want to get into the fibers, right? I want to make sure I stain it. So when you're painting your fabric with Junk Monkey paint, you're actually staining the fabric, right? What we don't want to do is just grab the brush, put the brush on top of it. Yes, you can do this. Yes, it will stick. <laughs> But you will get cracking because what happens is you got such a thick layer and you just like took the shortcut, right? You know what I mean? And you just put way too much on at once. And what happens is if you want your fabric to be a little bit more giving and have more of the, just yeah, like a give to it and have not a crunch to it or not a really super hardness to it, you know, you're going to build it up in layers, okay? But I like to spritz my fabric down first just a little bit. You guys know that, you know, you don't get your hair cut when your hair is dry, right? And when your hair is wet and the hairdresser does it, it shrinks after. So we, <clears throat> we're going to put some water on here just to mist it to kind of like get the fabric open and stretchy, okay? Just to kind of like to get the fibers ready to work with us. It makes it more workable. That's what at least what, you know, I've come to uh, find out in my, um, all my painting years. So anyway, just spritz it over with a little bit of water. Easy peasy. All right, we're good to go with that. Now, I always tell you guys that you can water down your Junk Monkey paint. It is made. In fact, yesterday when we did a live, we had a gentleman in the store, and he was like, you know, is that is your stuff like that other watered-down brand? Girl, no, we don't do that. We're not around these parts, okay? So we give y'all a lot. We pack a punch in one of these Pint Plus cans, all right? So what happens is you can water it down. I'm going to be totally honest with you. If you watered one of our cans down with the with equal part water, you would end up with like two cans of paint on your hands, okay? Because when I tell you we make our paint chunky, it's true. And the reason why we make our paint like this is because me as a painter, this paint was made for me, and I know that I don't want runny paint. I don't want stencils that bleed. I don't want to have to put a ton of tons, tons of uh, coat of something on it to, in, order, in order to get like really good coverage, right? So for all the reasons, no, we do not make watery paint, right? You guys can attest to that. But you can water it down if you want to. So in this case, this is what I'm going to do. So instead of putting on the full consistency of our rich paint onto fabric, I'm going to build it up. So this is going to be part one of fabric because really, if you want really good painted furniture, take your time, okay? It's the journey, all right? So the first thing that we do is basically put some paint out into the dish. Now you're going to say, how much? Here's the deal. At the end of the day, because I told you that you're dyeing and you're you know, staining your fabric, just pretty much do half water to half your paint and stir it up. You don't have to be OCD. You don't have to be like all crazy with it. But basically, you want to water it down because you're going to know the difference when your paint is watered down and when it's not, right? It's going to be, <laughs> I think I'm choking on something. Let me get, grab some water real quick. <laughs> you go ahead. You talk first. So Amy says it's three degrees here in Fairbanks. Alaska. We had a oh, guy in, yesterday. We had a guy in from Fairbanks. We did. Him yep. and his mom came in, yeah. and his uh, wife. He lives in Pennsylvania here locally now. But he's from Fairbanks. Where they're from? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, Alaska must be yeah. watching. <laughs> uh, Cindy says, "Love your videos from North Carolina." Yay, thank you very much. 
so let me go back. Did you see the man, Linda? Linda. Oh, Linda is replying to Linda. Oh, nice. Darn so do you Linda. see what I'm saying? That was just pretty much half water, half paint. You guys know that this stuff still holds on because if you saw me do a paint pour where I must have watered it with like 75% water and paint, stuck on and gave me some mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful painted tops in my stools. So I've spritzed this down, right? We've got half water, half paint, and I can grab whatever brush I want. Shabby chip brush or one of my full coverage brushes. Ann Hawes. I'm going to go for full coverage. Ann Hawes yeah. asks, can you put it in a sprayer and use it that way? In what way? The paint? Yeah, like yeah, put it in a sprayer. Absolutely. But I'm going to use my full co right. coverage brush uh, because I, you know, you can use your shabby chip brush. It just might take a little extra twist on your hands because there's more fibers in here. There's more paint bristles in here, right? So I always teach you guys that when you wax, go in circles, right? Because when you're going in circles, you're packing it into um, into your wood pores. This is fibrous uh, fabric pores, right? Mm. Same sort of thing. We want to go ahead and we want to get it in. Look how already, right? Pretty cool. But basically, you can take a paintbrush and you can go in X's, or you can go in circles and pretty much get the same effect, okay? So that's what we paint in circles. Teresa Cox checking in from St. John's. Hey, Teresa. So I want to build this up in layers, and I do not want it to be, like, super crunchy. You know what I'm saying? I already told you I'm going to paint the legs later in a different color. So if you're new here, I could totally paint them now if I wanted to, but that's not what I'm looking to do. Chris, um, we water it down so it doesn't get stiff, uh, yeah, crunchy. Exactly. It's going to be stiff, but the more you use it, the softer it gets. And I'll show you tomorrow yeah. how I loosen the fabrics again. Because between each step of staining the fabric, I then do a step to help basically loosen up the fabric again, okay? So yeah, so there you go. I love it. And so because I'm using my full coverage brush, I'm kind of twisting it in circles. You guys can see that. But you can already see how quick it already it goes, right? So yes. Go right over. Now, if you have a uh, some fabric that has a pattern into it, because you can get some pretty bold fabrics, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to be have to be something that you look at. So for me, if I'm painting something that has bold, bold pattern into it, I might want to go with something a little bit darker, right? Because it's going to be easier to cover, or else it's going to need more coats to cover, because sometimes fabrics are pretty bold and in your face, mm -hmm. right? So we just go over all the uh, all the piece just like this. You guys have a piece out there that you have in mind? There's a lot of Ottomans. A lot of Ottomans? Yeah, yeah. right? Leather Ottomans, other Ottomans, and the paint won't crack? No, because no. we're working it into the fabric. The paint does not crack, nope. This is why we uh, water it down, because if you're going to put it on full strength on fabric that bends and everything else, then you're going to be, you know, it's going to make your paint go all, it's basically going to be too thick for you. You need, to, uh, you need to water it down, and you need to stain your fabric. Mm. Somebody's asking, will it rub off on your clothes? No. Nope. No, actually, let me grab the chair here. Yeah, if you can get that out, that'd be great. So I just kind of mix up as I go. This really won't stay up. But as you can tell, this is one of my, this is my favorite paint sweater. Do you have, like, a favorite sweater? I've had this paint sweater, and it is, like, I've had it for years and years and years and years and years. And it's my favorite one. Let me see if I can see that. So I don't really mind if I get any on it, right? All right, let's do that, do that again. So, because I don't really keep track right, of how me, much. Let me swing over here just a little bit. I'm going to do, I think I'll do three scoops this time. One, two, okay, three they, scoops of the paint. They can see the chair on One, YouTube. They can two, see it on Facebook. Three. I don't need to be in the industry. There you go. Uh, you just want to scoop those. And over here, yes. There you go. 20 years and the fire is still there. Yeah. Ow. Ow. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and keep going with this. Can you guys see that chair behind me? I'm going to have to use your guns and lift it up. I don't know if I got my permit. That's being cheesy tonight. This is it. This is a fairly heavy chair. But this is it. And that's the Hulk. <laughs> you can see I'm pressing on the fabric and depressing and it's not. A lot of you guys will come into the store and sit in the chair. Yeah. That's why it's I just comfort. keep it around. Actually, I love it. It's very, YouTube will see this, Facebook won't. But uh, it's actually. Yeah. That chair looks good on you. Look. That look, chair looks I'm rubbing my butt into it. Matt over here is doing the Moroccan. Nothing um, on my clothes. I don't know, dance over there we here. Go. No, it doesn't pop in your clothes. And I'm going to show you guys how to seal it as well. So make sure. 
Make sure you're following me here so you can get all the parts. And okay? before you ask, this right here yes. is egg yolk. Yes, because uh, what happened? I like Your wearing, wife made you suffer. I like wearing my food. Yes. I told him. Dress him up, but can't take him out, right? Yes. Love it. Oh, I love it already. Yes. So I'm going to use this brush here. I always tell you guys, get one off the website. Keep one for your paint. Because you see how I'm kind of working it with my paint right now? Mm -hmm. And then keep one that stays in just nice shape for your poly. So your poly glides and your bristles don't go all weird. TMI matte matte. Well, what did you expect? Does the fabric need only one coat? No. I mean, it could. It could just look like this. Yeah. But I'm going to put one more coat onto it tomorrow. So I'll tell you what I do. So like I said, this is part one of the painting fabric. You can throw your paint all onto it. Will it stick? Yes. But will it be much more thicker and crunchier with your fabric and stiffer? Yes, because you're piling on more product, right? Whereas now I'm taking my time working it into the fabric and I'm staining it versus piling a ton of paint onto it, right? It's going into it. So I spritz my, um, my fabric and now I use my half and a half consistency of my um, Liberty Blue paint. I use the chalky style when I do this because this is Mr. Pickles. Remember Miss Petunia I've been teaching you guys? She's a little more spontaneous. She does what she wants, right? Yeah. Whereas uh, Mr. Pickles, he's the good boy. He's like, you know, when mom says just stay there and just wait, he stays there and he just waits. So it's all good. I'm just making sure because there's the way this piece was um, hand I guess we're not going to uh, Cleveland this week to look at that house. Well, I got a foot of snow up there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. By the way, did you tell me about banana bucks? Oh, I didn't. Well, you guys probably I know didn't. Do banana bucks, but for anybody new. Okay, Karen, we are painting it with Jump Monkey paint. We you paint everything are. here with Jump Monkey paint because it's our paint. It's what we do. <laughs> it's what we do. It's, when I couldn't uh, find the paint that I wanted, I designed my very own uh, map. So, uh, we're giving away 20 big banana bucks on Facebook and another 20 on YouTube. All you have to do is share this, then type share below in the comments and we'll pick one person from each side. So, and you'll get 20 banana bucks to use on our website for any product you'd like. Just enter the code at the end uh, when you're checking out. I'm just thinking about all the chalky Thank you. Is it a chalk paint? Uh, it's a chalky it's style. Our chalky it's style. a chalky yeah. style paint. Yes, yes. Copywritten. All the uh, trademark, trademark all, of the all of the above. Nobody has our recipe. That's right. We're the best. That's right. We don't and share. we keep it we in a. We share how to do stuff, right? With the paint. We keep it in a giant vault, just like Coca Cola. There you go. <laughs> There's monkeys that guard it. Yes. Rabbit like monkeys. Special paint. Yes. The monkeys in Florida that have people. yellow fever. <laughs> okay, I can't top that. All right. Did take my before photo. Alright, here we go. Yeah. Uh, Lucinda says, yeah. how to uncrunch a fabric chair. I painted a few years ago and it looks like leather and it's hard. I want it to be soft. Well, it's part of the process where we water down our paint. And uh, like I said, it, it feels, you know, stiffer to the touch when you first do it. But as you use it and sit in a chair and stuff, it's very, yeah, they can't. Here, you yeah, want to okay. do, do, do it again real quick? Alright, sure. Yep, see. Yeah, this is yeah, yeah, hit the back. Is, this yeah. feels comfortable. This yeah. is a comfortable chair, right? Yeah, I So here's the thing. Like you throw the chair out and you burn it, or you go, I think I'm going to junk monkey it, and yes, I'm adding product into my fabric, so I might stiffen it a little bit, but I'm going to follow Sonia's guidelines so it is as, you know, less stiff as possible, again, and use it in my home, and buy brand new, or throw it out. Because remember, we're working with pieces. I think I bought this for $5, right? Yes. To be able to give it new life. I know how to do it as We use only, yes, we only use the most technical of terms, less stiff. Less stiff. Yes. You got to know what I'm saying. I'm yep. a simple girl. Yep. Listen, if it's overcomplicated, don't worry. Boy, uh, everybody from Newfoundland's on tonight. Pat, really? Pat Hunt's on, too. Oh, thank you guys from my home. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, so there we go. So, we just changed this from the, uh, like, the ivory <laughs> color that it was to this beautiful Liberty Blue color. This is my very first step. So remember, if I didn't want to paint the legs right now, all I would do is tape them off with tape or ceram wrap or foil wrap. 
I'm concentrating on the fabric right now. The last thing I will do is actually repaint the legs, okay? Okay, two things real quick. Yeah, do it. Uh, just water and paint medium. Yeah, that's it. it. Um, there is no ex We're not going to yeah. be like, well, guys, we made this special medium for fabric. You need to buy that too. Girl, Junk Monkey is all that bag chips, okay? So all you need to do is get your Junk Monkey, water it down, and um, just put it on a piece of fabric, okay? Just put your fabric just to get it kind of like, it'll be more accepting and open up your, uh, the pores uh, of your fabric. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Oh, Joan says hi from Vineland, New Jersey. Ooh, yeah, hey, Joe. how are you? Yeah. Uh, where's this? Uh, where is it? My husband said they've got paint at Lowe's. I said, are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, we're not at Lowe's. No, we don't have flying monkeys because we couldn't get uh, FAA clearance for those. There you go. Matt, I signed they up for keto. Jan signed up for Keto Crate. Can't wait to get nice. it next Friday. Oh, yes, yeah. very nice. Oh, so, yeah, and then, hours. speak. Linda says, speaking of recipes, Matt, Matt, yes. how do I get... Uh, great dark concentrated flavor in my gravy. I don't want to use a ton of salty processed gravy based paste. For those of you uh, new Matt's a chef. I'm just yes. just continue yes. to cook it off. And eventually what you do is you'll hit demi gloss phase where it's just it, it just thickens up naturally and it's pure it's pure liquid. Just cook it down, cook it down, cook it down and it'll naturally thicken up. Uh, it's just water we're spritzing it with. Yep. Everybody's wondering about the legs. The legs? Why? Uh, oh, the furniture legs. Oh. So. I enjoy your videos. What, uh, yeah. Would that... I'm going to paint them later. i got to figure out the color for the legs once I get the top of the fabric. Would, would that can, can do that entire rocker? Yes, less than a can. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah, I just need uh, five scoops. <laughs> like five scoops because I'm like, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And there's and over so half a really can easy. left, yeah. Oh my gosh, there's like three quarters of a can left. I barely even touched it. Yes, it goes a very, very long way. So what's really cool is that if you have like, you know, I would definitely say do the technique on something small so you can get your hands wet and then really try it for yourself before you go on to something bigger. Because when you conquer a small project and you're like, okay, I can do this, right? One piece at a time. And I know that there are people out there that have, you know, couches and just needs a little help. And you're to the point where you're like, you just think you have to throw them out, right? Whereas you put some color onto it, if you can live with your know, painted furniture and love it, you can stencil it and do all kinds of fun stuff on it. I mean, just yeah. the stuff that you can do, right? You see this? Yes. Do you know what this is? Scissors. These are all the scissors I've been looking for. Okay. Kate is the scissor hoarder. There you go. All right. She's uh, Kate hands. All right. So honestly, guys, this is truly what I do. Because this is real time. We're going live with this. So you identify your project. You spritz it down. You do half paint, half water, stir it up, you get a full coverage brush, you twist in circles, and you dye your fabric, okay? Yeah. Now you let it dry overnight, because guess what happens when we come back for day 18 tomorrow? Our, this will be dry, and I will share with you the very next step. Our paint okay. is non-toxic water-based. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Anybody else have any questions before we take off? I do. Sleep? We're going to do some banana books, too. Go I'm ahead. doing a real creepy uh, pattern here. What? Found these, too. Three sets of nail clippers. Everything's in threes on her desk. There you go. Don't you find that a little bit weird? Maybe, maybe it's because we lost the first two and then we kept buying more. <laughs> and she keeps collecting them. Uh, so anyway, tomorrow I'm going to show you what my next step is going to be. This is just one coat, of course, guys, and it's wet. Now I let it dry. It's come back tomorrow. I'll show you what I do before my next step of applying another coat, okay? And we're going to show you how to seal it as well. So it's easy peasy. You got this, and so that way, if you need to, like, you know, put some color on something, you, you got this, right? So the hutch in the back is berry dance, oh, right? Absolutely. Yep. So, yeah, dance. yeah, yeah. Everybody's looking at this back here. So, needs needs to dry between coats is yes. the question. Yes. Yep. Let it dry, okay? Again, I didn't put too much on because I don't. I'm not looking for a crispy on here, okay? I'm looking to dye it with the water and the paint color, right? <laughs> this more on the back. This is good. Joanne says, I went to a local paint store and was okay. told I needed five to six gallons of paint oh, to wow. redo my hutch and dresser. After watching your show, I'm going to yeah. order junk money because really, you probably only need one can. Girl, listen, yeah, you definitely don't need that much, okay? Two at the most. That much money. Oh, my gosh. That's probably, you know the watering paint that I talked about at the beginning? Yeah. No. You just need some good, rich pigments in your can and work with a paint that has integrity. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, this mm. junk monkey will treat you well mm. and go along with it. It's berry dance with a black tinted monkey shine in the back. So berry yeah. dance is a very bright, 
vibrant yeah. color. Yeah. Yeah. Pop pinkish kind of color. Yeah. Isn't it cool back there? But what happens is when you antique it, you dull your colors just a little bit, right? They kind of, they just kind of like come back down to earth a little bit. And you can deal with browns and blacks typically if you're looking for antiquing. There you but go. that's how vibrant it is without uh, anything on top of it, right? So it's fun. All right, Matt, I think we should go ahead and uh, holler out a winner on Facebook and YouTube. Oh, we're done already. And uh, yeah, right now we just let yeah. this, we just totally just let this dry. Okay. My work here is done. That was easy. Okay, winner on Facebook is Kelly Dukich. Kelly! All right, girl. You're my girl. I'm going to wait for your email. I'm going to tell you what to do in just a second. Winner so on YouTube is Cindy Luden. Cindy! All right. Cindy and Kelly, make sure you email me at jumpmonkeypaint at gmail.com before midnight tonight, Eastern Standard Time. Put winner, 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 winner in the subject line so I don't miss your email. Because I want to, what I want to do is respond back to you. I could make sure you do that before midnight because this offer expires, right? Now's your chance to grab some Junk Monkey. 20 bucks to spend at JunkMonkeyPaint.com. But I will respond back to you when you respond to me with a code, a secret, super secret code you can use uh, for $20 off. Yeah. Sounds yeah. fun, right? So yeah, I wish there was more, but guys, Junk Monkey makes it really love easy. What can I say? This is easy. So now I wash my brushes. I come back tomorrow. We pick up where we left off. We pick up where we left off. So make sure you come back tomorrow, all right? Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, and make sure you give our page on Facebook a very big like and follow so you don't miss miss out, okay? Right. And if you want announcements on Facebook, we do use a program where Piggles the Monkey, he mans our messenger uh, chat bot on um, Facebook. All you have to do is when you're done with this video, go scroll to the top of the Facebook here on my Junk Monkey Paint Company, Click as if you were sending me a message. You're going to be sending Pickles a message and just say the word live or alert or subscribe. And Pickles will write you back and say, did you want to subscribe? And you can say yes, okay? And so what happens uh, every time before we go live, we send out a live alert so you guys don't miss out, all right? Sound good? Yeah. Sound the plan? All right, I'll meet you back here tomorrow, probably around the same time, and we'll pick up. What's step two? All right.